Hey, I'm Andy with the Mandel team at Remax, and I'm here to bring you your October 2023 housing market update. As always, for the purposes of these videos, we're talking about single family homes only in Boca, Parkland, and Coral Springs. Those are the areas where our team does the predominant amount of our business. And we're talking about single family homes only, no condos, no townhouses, no country clubs, no 55 and overs. So when we give you these stats, we're giving you the leading indicators showing you where the housing market is headed, not where it's been. Typically, when you hear these stats from the, the media, talking about closed sales price, which is really indicative of what happened 30, 60, sometimes even 90 days ago. So we're giving you what's happening in the market right now so you know where the market is headed, not where it's been. So let's get into it. The first stat we like to look at is the number of new listings hitting the market. This is the supply. Real estate's all about supply and demand. In Boca, supply is up 6% compared to this time last year. So 2023 September compared to 2022 September, we saw 6% more new listings in Boca. Parkland, on the other hand, was 20% fewer listings and Coral Springs was 17% fewer listings. So a little bit different dynamics depending on the city that you're looking in, but Parkland and Coral Springs, way fewer homes hitting the market. That's typically what we've been seeing. The 6% increase in listings in Boca, that's an anomaly very different from what we've been seeing over the past couple months. Typically, we're seeing fewer homes hit the market because people have these low interest rates. They don't wanna give them up for today's higher rates. So we're seeing fewer people list their homes. At the same time, the next stat we like to look at is pending sales. So the number of homes coming off the market, which would be the demand. So in Boca, that's actually up 16.4% compared to this time last year. So more homes are coming under contract in Boca. Parkland is down 3%. Coral Springs is down 8.6%. So fewer homes hitting the market, fewer homes selling, but supply is down less than demand across the board. So fewer homes hitting the market than homes coming off. We have more demand than supply. Typically that leads to an increase in the prices, which is what we've been seeing again. So the next stat we like to look at is the days on market. How long is it taking from a home to be listed to go under contract? In Boca, that was 21 days last month. Parkland was 25 days. Coral Springs, 22 days. Now those are the median. So that is 19% faster than this time last year. In the end, towards the end of 2022, the fourth quarter, we saw interest rates really starting to spike. The market really, really, really slowed down and things took a lot longer to sell if they were selling at all. People these days have gotten much more used to these higher interest rates. So that trend we are seeing reverse and homes are selling faster than they were this time last year. The next stat we like to look at is closed price to original list price to factor in price reductions. Now, Boca Raton, the average sales price to list price was 95.5%. So buyers are getting roughly 4.5% off the purchase price. Parkland was 95%, Coral Springs, 98.5%. All of those are up 2% from this time last year. So buyers are paying closer to the asking price than they were this time last year. Sellers are getting more of their asking price than this time last year. The next stat we like to look at is arguably the most important, and that's the month's supply of inventory. What this stat shows me is that if no more homes were to hit the market at the current pace of sales, how long would it take for all of the homes on the market to go under contract and sell? So a balanced market is roughly five to six months worth of inventory. Anything less than that is a seller's market. Anything more is a buyer's market. Boca right now is 3.44 months of inventory. We've been above three months of inventory in Boca basically all year. So still a seller's market, uh, but not anywhere near as strong as Parkland and Coral Springs. Parkland is 0.22 months of inventory. So literally one week of inventory at the current pace of sales. Coral Springs, 1.73 months of inventory. So very much still a seller's market. When it was during COVID, basically all three cities saw one month, give or take or less. Parkland is still really, really low. Coral Springs, higher than what it was during the height of the pandemic and the buying frenzy, but still very, very much a seller's market. Sellers are really still in control of this market. Now, let me be clear, that does not mean that sellers get to pick whatever price they want for their home. Quite the opposite. What we're seeing today is buyers know rates are high. I'm paying high interest rates. I'm paying high prices. I better love this house and it better be priced correctly. So we're seeing a lot of homes sit on the market for a very, very long time. And that's because sellers are not, maybe they're not motivated. Maybe they're not realistic on the price, but homes that are priced correctly, doesn't matter what the condition is. If it's priced correctly and marketed properly, they're still selling in, you know, our listings are selling in one, two, three days if they're priced correctly, which almost all of them are, because we're honest and upfront with our sellers about what it's gonna to take to sell their house in this market. So what does this all mean? How do you navigate this market? So let's talk about buyers specifically. Interest rates right now are 
close to 30 year highs. Today, if you were to, to you know, the beginning of October, if you were to, to lock in your interest rate, you'd be roughly seven and a half percent. That's high, that scares a lot of people and it's putting a lot of buyers on the sideline. They don't want to pay those kind of interest rates. And I get it, it's, it's expensive, payments are high. You have to be able to qualify with today's rates. And basically that means for a medium price house, a family has to be making you know $175,000 or more to afford the medium price house. There are definitely a lot of people who can do that. We have a lot of people still moving to South Florida, professionals, you know, white collar, doctors, lawyers, whatever it is, people making a lot of money who can afford that, but I don't wanna sugarcoat it. It is definitely tough for the middle class, for people who aren't making a lot of money to be able to afford even just the medium price house. But what do we do to navigate that? Well, if you're a buyer, what we've been trying to do is two one buy downs and three two one interest rate buy downs. So maybe you've heard these, but every buyer wants to get a deal. Everyone wants to feel like they're getting a deal. And the stats show us that the average sales price to list price is roughly, let's call it 95%. So let's give an example with real numbers. You're buying a $700,000 house, you're putting down 10%, which means you're getting a mortgage for $630,000. At today's seven and a half interest rates, that means your payment would normally be about $4,405, and that does not include taxes, insurance, and HOA, so just principal and interest. If you do a three, two, one buy down, what that means is the seller is giving you a credit and they are prepaying your interest for the first three years of the mortgage to get your interest rate down. So three, two, one means your interest rate would be 3% lower in year one, 2% lower in year two, 1% lower in year three, and in year four, that rate goes back up to whatever the rate is that we lock in today. So let's call it seven and a half percent. This is different than what was happening prior, you know, in, in 08 when people had adjustable rate mortgages and, and that rate was floating at the end. You have to qualify at today's seven and a half percent rate, but if you can get the seller to pay this three, two, one buy down, it can dramatically reduce your costs. So let's talk about it. It's $29,567 would be the credit the seller has to give you to do this three, two, one buy down at today's rates. So this is much better for you as a buyer than getting 30,000 off the purchase price. If you took 30,000 off that 700 purchase price and you bought the home for 670, it would save you $189 a month. If you go the buy down route and that seller credits you this 29,000 and change, on year one, your payment every single month would be $1,212 less. Year two, you're saving $827 a month. Year three, $423 a month. And then in year four, it goes back up to $4,405, which is what your payment would be if you got no credit at $700,000 and a 7.5% interest rate. So these are substantial savings and it makes the house way more affordable. If you do it this way, you're paying a higher list price, yes, but when you credit it towards your interest rate, at the end of the day, the price of the property is less what we see people concerned with, and it's more so the payment, living within your means and having a comfortable monthly payment. So this means the credit that you're getting for as a buyer is about 4.2% of the purchase price in this scenario. Because the average sales price to list price is roughly 95%, if you got a 5% seller credit and you paid that full price, you are significantly better off. Now here's the real pro about this. If you refinance this loan at any time, the Federal Reserve says interest rates are gonna be higher for longer. They're not expecting rates to really come down dramatically before the end of 2024 probably 2025. So if you know you, you wait two years and then rates drop and you refinance it, whatever is left over in that prepaid interest from the seller in this $29,000, you get that back as a buyer. So you're getting basically free money if you refinance when the rates do drop. And I do expect them to drop in the future, not in the near future, but in the foreseeable future, probably 2025 would be my guess based on all the economic data that I'm seeing. You will get some of that money back. You've taken advantage of the buy down. You've gotten lower payments over these last couple of years. And when rates do drop, what we are predicting is that there's going to be a rush of buyers back into the market because rates are lower. They feel like it's a better time to buy. When buyers come back in, it's gonna increase the competition. Prices are going to increase in the future. That is my prediction on what's gonna happen over the long term here. So buying now with this buy down gets you an affordable payment and helps you take advantage of that increase in prices in the future. So you're getting that equity, not 
you know, the, the seller, not the other buyer. I want you to take advantage of that. Real estate is a get rich slowly game. It's not meant to, you know, come in and have the price explode 40, $50,000 a year, you know, 25% a year. You know, buy it now. Over time, the prices will increase and you will be much better off. You'll be thanking me that you took advantage of a program like this. So if you have any questions, if you're a buyer, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. We'd love to walk you through this in your specific situation. If you're a seller and you're questioning how to navigate this market with fewer buyers and longer, you know, what's going on right now, again, call us, text us, email us. We got your back when moving in South Florida. We'd love to talk about how this affects you specifically. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next month.